Right, I thought I'd make a quick video, um, just because it might be useful to someone. But uh, I took my bike out the weekend, and uh, we're having fun on it, I haven't been in a while. And then I get the power drops, and it's making a clanging noise. Still working, pull over, check the oil, check you know, bits and pieces. The oil was really low. I'm not sure what happened because it had a new oil change, whether it was losing oil. Um, this is the old engine and there is a little pressure valve at the back here. And sometimes that was, I don't know why, but it used to kick up quite a lot of oil on mine. I don't know if it was stuck open, but anyway, by the looks of it, there was enough oil in the engine, no check light come on. And um, I cut in a video, but basically I took the head off, the barrel off, looked at the piston and there's bits of metal all inside there. The main crank, the bearings of the main crank have been completely destroyed. <laughs> Look at how baggy it is. And I think there's bearings in. If you look between, there's bearings there. And there's some bearings there. See? It's not right, is it? Um, I was going to get a new crank and crack it open, but I don't know what the amount of damage is inside the engine, so I'm probably just going to sell this for cases and stuff like that to someone who wants to break it. So I ended up buying another engine to replace it. Um, just think it's more financially viable to spend a little bit of money on this than to try and fix this and not know if there's more damage in there. The reason I'm making the video is because this is a 2015 engine and this is 2017 onwards. 2015 has a oxygen sensor in the side and the later models don't because they relocated it to the exhaust. I have actually got an exhaust attachment where I can put the oxygen sensor to it. This is a connector to it. From what I can see, it's just one single wire. So what I'm hoping to do is just extend this wire to the side of the exhaust. And I'm hoping with the same ECU, this engine will work. The engine codes are the same, but the only difference is that I can see is the fact they relocated this, I think for emissions. So I thought I'd make this video just to show how it goes. If anyone else's engine's blown up, I can find an older engine. I could find a newer engine, but not an older engine. Um, and these have roughly got the same mileage on them as well. So I'm going to take the head off this, check the valve clearances, uh, make sure they're right while I've still got it open. Uh, just check it over generally. Reinstall it into the bike, all the fluids and stuff, and see how she runs. See if she runs fine with this ECU. Or worst case scenario, is I'll have to take the engine out again, take this head off, buy a new head gasket, transfer this one to this one, because that's the only difference I can see, and hopefully the ECU will run fine. But some people do unplug the oxygen sensors, but I don't know what it does to the performance. So this is just really a video for anyone else who's having that same situation. I'll do a little experiment, see how it works out. And if it doesn't, then I'll go the whole hog and change this, this head over. Um, that's it, I'll let you know how I get on. I sliced in a few videos of the damage that's been done to this engine as well. Basically, lack of oil. Can't work out why it's losing oil though. So apart from it, like this little, I think it's a pressure valve. There's loads of oil down here. So just uh, like a bit like on the, uh, you can see on this one as well. So I'll check the oil on that. Change that anyway. Cheers. So 
I've got the engine in, top dead centre, taken off the two caps and the T. I've taken the um, head cover off. And so you got exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake. So all I need to do now is measure the gaps in the shims to make sure it's still in spec. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it's the valve clearances are about probably aimed for about 15 and 27. Let's find out. So, it's on the intake. This is a 15 gauge. Perfect. A little bit tight. Yeah, good enough. Right, exhaust. Uh, should be 27. I've only got a 25, so as long as these are they're not too tight. So look. No, it's tight on the exhaust. Yeah, that is tight. Okay. Right, they need adjusting. Okay. So I've measured them. The gap's only 0 0.20 on both of these. So my target is uh, 0 0.27. So I'll measure both the shims. Obviously these would be smaller shims. Uh, see if I've got the shims today to do it. If not, um, I'll put the engine in and I can do it while it's still sat in the bike. And I'll show you how to do that. It's really easy. So all you want to do is remove this little bolt here. It's a little, got a washer behind it. And there's a little pin in there. Focus. You take that out. And then that allows you to allows you to move this rocker arm back, take these shims out, measure them, and then change them. Just gonna take the shims out of a magnet, in there. Be careful not to drop them in the engine. And I will Measure the values of these two, and then calculate the new size of the shims. So it's the first one looking like one two point two seven. Right, I've measured the shims and just followed the instructions. There's a formula. So <coughs> it's A equals B minus C in brackets plus D. A is a new shim, uh, B is the recorded valve clearance, uh, C is the specific, specified valve clearance where you're aiming for, and D is your shim thickness. So you can see I've worked that all out, so B is there, C is there, gives you a value of minus 0.07 plus your valve, you know, your original shim. So I need a shim that's 2.2 and the other side is 2.21. So I need to find a shim. Uh, here are my new shims. You can see on the top there 2.2, 2.2. So I'll just pop them in. Right, I put the, the valves back in. Sorry, shims back in. Put the bolt back in so i've just cycled it a few times to get some oil around i'm just going to measure to make sure the clearances are right so there should be 0 0.27 i've only got a 0 0.25 feeder gauge so as long as there's a little bit of those that'll be fine and yeah that's fine yeah looks good right, uh before i put the head back on you want to put a little bit of uh silicon here stop any leaks 
uh, which goes along here and then torque it down and then if you're ready to put the engine into the bike exciting all right the head's back on uh, i need to tighten up the spark plug and these are both 10 newton, newton meters of torque for the top right the next task is to get that into here and we'll get someone to help me you've only got these four bolts take them out put the engine in this way uh plan locating the throttle body is a bit a bit of a pain uh yeah get it in i'll probably put some copper slip on these to stop them from corroding torque it up and then connect all of these wires back up and then fire up and see if she goes engine's in i uh, just basically did it on my own lifted it in use this to prop it up line up the bolts one two three four just gonna torque them up and then start connecting all the wires up fire up engine's in i've relocated the oxygen sensor from here just extended the wire and the exhaust has already got a port in it i don't know how it's going to run but i read online that you can also um detach it and it gives you a bit more torque down low lose some mpg so if it runs rough i'll uh detach it so once I get it all back together, which I'm sort of getting there now, I need to fill it up with some coolant, um, check the oil tank back on, I'll give it a run. Okay, bike's all back together, fluids are in, uh, I'm going to go down to the local garage to get some oil, change out the oil because I don't know how long it's been in the engine. Uh, just started up, started up fine. Um, sensor is located there, seems to be working, I won't know until I test ride it. Yeah, seems to be okay. Thank <laughs> you.